With that, Jesus retreats with his disciples to celebrate the Passover meal. It's the annual symbolic meal about Israel's liberation from slavery through the death of the lamb. And so Jesus turns the meal's bread and wine into new symbols about this new exodus. His broken body, his shed blood, will bring liberation for Jesus' renewed Israel. Bread and wine. Bread an everyday staple. Nothing flash, just what was there on the table amongst us. Then he took it, made it something incredibly special, turned it into something that would remind us of him each time we took it and ate. Something always with us, always using, a daily part of our diet, now reminds us of Jesus, his time here amongst us, and his presence with us now. Wine, rich, red, flowing, warming, deep within, his presence here now. In me, with me, through me, from him, I am invited to take, to eat, to remember who, what and why this has become a symbol. His love poured out for me, for us, for a world in need. He went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep away. Breaking Heart, Gethsemane. Sit with me while I pray. As I pour my heart out to my Father. Be with me while I fight this battle. As I cry out for relief, struggle with what I know has to be done. Pray for me, watch with me, please. My heart is breaking, my spirit is weak. I can't bear what is being asked of me. Please take it from me, let there be another way, a different answer. Oh Father, must I, can I? How will I? I can only do this with your help. And going a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want what you want. He came and found him sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into that time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, flesh of you. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy. 
and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? How can you sleep when I asked you to watch with me? How can you let me down at my point of such deep need? So quick with your answers, but slow when I needed support. I need you. I can't do this alone. Oh Lord, how I let you down. You ask so little of me, yet I let it slip. You ask me to watch and pray, and I sleep. What has passed me by? What have I missed? Of you? Of those around? What pain have I failed to carry? Physical, emotional, spiritual? Give me strength to be alert, to stick with the task, to bear with you. I couldn't do it. All you asked was for me to sit while you prayed. That is nothing. And yet, I couldn't do it. You were in turmoil, your soul disturbed. You knew what was coming. You asked me to keep watch, and I didn't. You were crying out to your father, anguished for what you knew was to come, and I slept. You had to struggle with what was needed and what you might have preferred. You asked that I watched over you, that I wouldn't come into trouble, but I couldn't do it. Sleep took over. It was nothing fancy, nothing complicated that you asked of me, just to watch, to be there with you. I let you down. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. No price, Judas. It turns out 30 pieces of silver is no price for a life. Not for his and not for mine. What have I done? I was trying to help. Trying to move things along. How wrong could I be? I have betrayed a man who never did anything wrong and now I can't take it back. They won't let me. What can I do? I don't want this money. I was a fool, easily bought, too quick to go along with someone else's plan. How can I ever make this right? How can I atone for the life I have wasted? For the life I have betrayed and sold short? Nothing and no one can save me. I have no hope left. I sold my hope, my peace, my opportunity for a new life. And it wasn't worth it. When I have no hope left, no hope in myself or the world around, may I remember, Lord, that my hope is in you. 
and you alone and hold on to it. This painting is by Michael Cook. It is titled Minor, A Minor Gethsemane. I'm reading from Psalm 61 in the Passion Translation. O God, hear my prayer, listen to my heart's cry, for no matter where I am, even when I'm far from home, I will cry out to you for a father's help. When I'm feeble and overwhelmed by life, guide me into your glory, where I am safe and sheltered. Lord, you are a paradise of protection to me. You lift me high above the fray. None of my foes can touch me when I'm held firmly in your wraparound presence. Keep me in your glory. Let me live continually under your shadow, splendour shadow, hiding my life in you forever. You have heard my sweet resolutions to love and serve you, for I am your beloved, and you have given me an inheritance of rich treasures which you give to all your lovers. You treat me like a king, giving me a full and abundant life, years and years of reigning, like many generations rolled into one. I will live enthroned with you forever. Guard me, O God, with your unending, unfailing love. Let me live my days walking in grace and truth before you, and my praises will fill the heavens forever fulfilling my vow to make every day a love gift to you. Lord God, I've been thinking about that first Maundy Thursday and the Garden of Gethsemane. It must have been so hard for you to know exactly what Jesus was going to experience so that we could have a future. We find it hard to comprehend that our brokenness was worth something to you. You love us so much you sent Jesus to die for us because you thought and still think we are worth it. We are humbled by your recognition that we were worth all that pain. Jesus was able to pray, not my will, but yours. Please help us to do the same. Thank you that you love us. You accept us, just as we are. Sometimes it is hard to pray, to know how to speak with you, to be ourselves in our struggles and our brokenness. We ask for your patience, guidance and wisdom. Lord God, thank you that you accept us and you understand us. At times all we can say is help. Sometimes it's a cry or shout, sometimes a whisper. Lord, thank you that you do understand us. We are finding life so hard at the moment. God, thank you that you do understand. When all we can do is cry to you, thank you that you listen to us. Help us to also listen to you. We come to you now, Lord God, and bring to you all that is concerning us. We hand these prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, believing you will answer in the best possible way. Amen. <laughs> 